hoping that I'm sharing the right uh, screen. Um, this, uh, the, the, my presentation will talk about uh, the intended uh, network flight simulation and control laboratory that, that I plan on establishing at, uh, at Auburn and for which I'm already starting to order some of, uh, some of the equipment. Uh, so um, to start, I will start with an introduction. Uh, so uh, first I'd like to present myself. Uh, I uh, graduated from uh, Penn State uh, with my PhD in 2019. And I also got my master's there. Uh, prior to that, I got my, my bachelor's in, uh, from Polytechnic University of Milan in Italy. Um, I am currently finishing my postdoc at George Beck, but as Dr. Thoreau said, I will be joining uh, Auburn uh, June 1st, so pretty soon. And, and before than that, um, I, I was a Penn State graduate research assistant, and I also had the opportunity to, to spend some time at NASA Ames working for the um, U.S. Army um, Aviation Development Director. Um, and my research field is mostly flight dynamics and controls, system identification, and time periodic systems, application span, rotor rotorcraft, especially helicopters, uh, some eVTOLs, and also unmanned aerial systems, uh, flapping wing flights, so insects and birds, that's uh, something I took on more recently, and also some fixed wing aircraft. So, um, as a background to network simulations, well, sim simulation networking uh, started um, back in the 1980s, or even late 70s. And two examples of the earliest simulation networking systems were the DARPA SIMNAT and Multisim, as articulated in the studies by Miller and Thorpe and, and George Law. Um, and Typically, these kind of systems were used for either mission rehearsal or team training in military operations. And some of the advantages of these systems were that linked simulators uh, are heterogeneous, so they can uh, simulate either aircraft, helicopters, or different uh, different vehicles in general. Um, this, the simulation units do not need to be collocated. Uh, in fact. Um, and this distributed simulation units can be connected across large distances to the same simulation um, environment. And also, uh, these simulations are flexible in the sense that uh, simulation units can be added and removed without this disruption to the main uh, system. So, um, this kind of architecture allows for uh, multi pilot or multi aircraft operations, such as aerial refueling, uh, cooperative slang load, uh, carriage, air combat, or air traffic management. There may be also other examples. Uh, however, these systems have been historically not uh, used in general for research. So um, how can we take these ideas and, them, and make them more contemporary? And uh, so one thing that we can do is, is to start observing that some of the past approaches uh, used projected screens and large motion bases um, and, and realistic uh, physical cockpits, uh, just because there was, there was no other way to model a, a, a cockpit of an airplane, if not uh, physically. So uh, this contributed to making the system very large and, and heavy, and therefore um, made them have a high acquisition, maintenance, and operation costs. So typically, uh, this kind of uh, network systems were government initiatives rather than university initiatives just because of the of the cost associated to them so um however the advent of virtual reality can significantly change things in that uh, it eliminates the need for large projected screens and physical cockpits which reduces the size and weight carried by the motion platform and of the motion platform itself so this allows for a lower mass of an inertia over the motion platform and so increased bandwidth motion and range and also uh, it allows for a lower cost and so more and so this this kind of net, net network simulations become more affordable also for academic research and only for government or for um, large uh, corporate uh, corporations and also one could think about virtual reality is it is that it allows for a 360 visual environment rather than a visual environment that, I, that is um, um, limited to how big the projected screen is. So um, moving on to the laboratory vision. Uh, 
So the approach uh, that I would like to take is uh, for the plan lab is to merge the, latest, the latest technologies in virtual reality or uh, and augmented reality, uh, motion, uh, the latest technologies in motion tracking and haptic feedback pilot suits as well with a motion-based simulation unit that you can see there on the right to allow for immersive augmented reality simulations suitable for research purposes uh, with, the, with the platform that is contained in size and also in cost. And so, um, in addition, uh, I plan on linking multiple of these units uh, for, for, uh, for starters, two of them, and then I may acquire more in the future. Um, and so to allow for um, research uh, that, um, that involves um, multiple pilots uh, or aircrafts, uh, such as, again, uh, area refueling, co cooperatives, land load, um, carriers, air combat, or air traffic manage management, and there may be other applications as well. Um, so, uh, the, 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 pro this, the, the resulting system that I plan on building um, would be, therefore, multipurpose in that you can in interface with multiple simulation environments, such as MATLAB, Flight Lab, or Julia. Uh, can simulate different cockpit graphics because within uh, the graphical interface that we use for uh, at the beginning uh, at least, which is X-Plane, one can simulate or construct uh, different simulation cockpits. Um, the system will be reconfigurable uh, because it will be um, it, it will it will be equipped with both fixed wing and rotorcraft controls. So the system will be able to uh, simulate uh, either general aviation uh, airplanes jets but also rotorcraft and um, also it will be able to we will be, we'll be able to implement motion queuing systems um, mo different motion queuing algorithms um, it will be modular in that uh, multiple units can be will be able to be linked together uh, and it will have some kind of an enhanced motion queuing experience just because the low that the, the weight uh, on the motion platform is basically just that of the pilot. And so it has pretty low and mass inertia that, it, that um, gives an increased motion bandwidth and range. And we'll see some of the characteristics of the simulator later on in the presentation. Um, also, the simulation will be immersive because virtual reality provides a 360 degree vision environment and it allows for a look down capability, which is very important for helicopters. but that many simulations uh, out there do not have just because uh, they're not using virtual reality. So that's uh, one of the perks. Then there are, also, of course, also downsides of using virtual reality. Um, another perk is that the augmented reality approach, uh, which is basically a, a feed-through approach um, for the pilot in the sense that the pilot can see the simulation environment, but can also see outside of the simulation. And so the pilot will be able to see its hands. And if not with this approach, uh, would we'll be able to, through the pilot suit, um, uh, build the projection of the pilot hands in the simulation environment so that the pilot can actually see its hands um, and interact with the, with, the, with the physical objects in the cockpit. Uh, so, and, and also, uh, the, the, um, the simulation will be, um, will be immersive in the sense that they will use haptic feedback. So haptic feedback will be provided to the pilot both through, through feed, uh, uh, force feed controls, through a full body uh, hap haptic feedback suit, and through their, it, the, the haptic feedback gloves. So this system will uh, enable the following broad research topics. So the plan we, will be to conduct fundamental research on virtual reality uh, and augmented reality for piloted flight simulation and handling qualities evaluations. Uh, development and testing of advanced flight control systems, novel queuing systems and algorithms such as uh, tactile uh, queuing systems and haptic feed, uh, force field, uh, the haptic uh, uh, queuing system through uh, the, the suit and through the controls. Um, for one example is that um, the position of a, um, an adversary um, that uh, fighter jet would be queued to the pilot body uh, through the pilot suit. So the pilot would feel the position of the other aircraft on its body. So that's one of the ideas that it's actually been researched in the past. That's, so that's why I'm able to speak about it. Um, also, uh, another uh, avenue for research will be simulation of uh, high acceleration flight with the low acceleration motion feedback, because of course, uh, this 
the, the motion system that we have has some limitations it, it, uh, in, in the accelerations that it can provide. However, with the pilot suit, one can simulate the accelerations on the body of the pilot with um, localized pressure. So that's another thing that could be studied. We, could, we were going to study human machine interaction and also development of pilot models. Um, so just uh, to give a brief rundown of the uh, main highlights of the equipment. So about the motion base and the v, uh, uh, virtual reality headset, the motion platform is about uh, 600 pounds, equivalent to 300 kilograms. Uh, and it, the displacement, especially on, uh, in, of the angular motion, it's about 30 degrees, but it has a pretty high bandwidth uh, in that it arrives at about 120 degrees per second, which is high compared to other uh, motion platforms out there um, for the same cost. Uh, and the visual system, it's in VR engineers XTAL 8K, which is uh, for now, at least uh, the most advanced has that available on the market. Um, the resolution is about 5K per eye, um, and it's got a uh, about a 180 degrees of field of view and 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 pretty high refresh rate. Um, it also has hand tracking, so it can track the hands of the pilot and recreate them in the simulation environment uh, through the ultra leap technology. And it also has eye tracking for in case one wanted to. Uh, uh, study uh, human factors as well. Um, about the haptic feedback uh, pilot suit, it's, uh, this is a, a, a Tesla suit and it's got um, a, a, a haptic, haptic feedback system with uh, about 80 uh, electrostimulation channels and 114 electrodes. Uh, it has the capability of biometry um, and, and also motion tracking through uh, both six axis and nine axis IMU, nine, uh, the three additional axes there from the uh, magnetometer um, and, and it transmits its data through Wi-Fi. Um, and then uh, the last piece of equipment that I plan on, on acquiring is uh, and using our feedback gloves so that uh, a pilot can, can, can be cued information and, uh, for, with these haptic feedback gloves. Um, of course, um, the simulation units would be nothing without a brain to power them. So um, uh, during my postdoc, I took some time to develop uh, a, a, um, a, several simulation models, uh, one of which uh, is called Rotorcraft Simulation Engine or ROSE, um, as it started as a simulation environment for Rotorcraft. However, it also became a simulation environment for aircraft, so I will have to change name soon. Uh, in any case, uh, this simulation environment is developed both in Julia, which is a programming language uh, by MIT, open source and uh, compiled, uh, which is similar to MATLAB, but not exactly the same because uh, uh, Julia is compiled, MATLAB is interpreted, so different approach, but uh, similar results. And also the simulation platform is also available in, in MATLAB. Uh, we ha I have uh, different uh, various fidelity models for helicopters. I have a simple a helicopter model based on the pad feed on the theory and in the pad feed book. Uh, I, I currently have UH-60, Bell 430, and other uh, helicopters um, available uh, in that. A arm cop model, which is based on a NASA technical report, which is a little bit higher fidelity, but not significantly. GenHel, uh, which is uh, a, a, um, a simulation model that is typically used by Sikorsky, but uh, it's available through a NASA, a NASA technical, uh, um, technical um, memorandum, and it's higher fidelity, but uh, I would say mid-fidelity. But I, I recently augmented it with a state space uh, implementation of a free wake, so CFD for the rotor, uh, and which has thousands of states, so this is very high accuracy. I also have other models available, uh, models for an F-16, so fixed-wing aircraft, and also, I recently developed a, an air acoustic solver uh, for solving for uh, the noise produced aerodynamically by a helicopter. And this is based on a marching cubes algorithm, which is typically a, a an algorithm or strategy that is used in, uh, in computer graphics because it's pretty fast. Um, also, the graphics that would be used by simulator is explained. So, simulations will, could be, uh, this, the configuration of the simulators could be 
rotorcraft, 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 fixed wing or fixed wing, fixed wing, depending on the mission task that we need to accomplish. Uh, I will go very briefly through the intended research that I plan on uh, on on using the simulators for. Uh, one of which is the linearization of uh, and uh, linear the linearization of the coupled flight dynamics and acoustics of a rotorcraft. Uh, for doing so, we can use the Fox Williams Soaking equation, which describes the aerodynamically induced noise uh, through the coupling of the, some of the simulation models that I described before. Uh, one can include the, the noise as an output uh, of a dynamic system of, of a rotorcraft and then linearize through um, linearization methods that we're developing. And, and therefore, uh, can use these linear models to then control. Uh, the, 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 the noise of the helicopter and try to reduce it. And so this can be applied for both community, for uh, both um, noise in communities or noise in the aircraft, so cockpit noise. And, and then queuing methods can be developed through the simulation units that, uh, that are described to uh, queue perhaps the noise to the pilot and see uh, and, 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 and make the pilot aware of the noise that the aircraft is producing on a particular point on the ground or in the cockpit or somewhere else. Um, other research that I plan on, 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 on uh, that I've already started doing, but I plan on continuing is uh, the application of uh, neural uh, ordinary differential equations to aerospace vehicles. Recently, uh, um, neural networks have been formulated as ordinary differential equations. Um, and so I plan on try and using these construct, mathematical constructs as, um, as an alternative to system identification and use the simulation units to provide the, system, the, the, the data for system identification. And then a bunch of other topics uh, on identification of time periodic systems of novel uh, helicopters, um, control system design for pilot queuing for out rotations, and some dynamics and control on eVTOL uh, vehicles, uh, similar to what Dr. Chakraborty uh, does there could be very much many uh, opportunities for collaborations here um and also uh one thing the simulation units would not be used for but is the the, the study of the uh, stability and and control of um biological and by inspired vehicles such as uh insects or flapping wing microaerial vehicles all right uh, so this is all uh i uh thank you for 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 listening and i'd be happy to take any any questions you may have